Good evening. A family is devastated after a raceway named after their late son was vandalized and damaged early Thursday morning. And as Megan Willis explains, this isn't the first time the track has been targeted. Yesterday at approximately 10 o'clock in the morning, we received a complaint of a stolen car. And it was uh, actually a Dodge truck that was stolen from Fiber Spar here in Lloydminster in the industrial area. RCMP say the stolen truck was driven through the fence and used to damage the raceway. Well, this is the third time that we've been vandalized this year. Um, the first two times uh, they came in and ran into our porta potty. Uh, so we've gone through two of those so far. Uh, and this time uh, they ripped out a bunch of our fencing. After surveying the damage to the track for the third time this summer, Gilcrest feels disappointed by the break ins and the damage that's been done. It's been very frustrating for us because, like I said, the club doesn't have a lot of money and we are all volunteers. And it, it's just so senseless for, for people to come out here and do this to our club. I mean, we're here. To, to help the community and, and provide a facility for people to ride at. Although it may seem like a senseless act of vandalism, for the Bachman family, it feels like a personal attack. Professional motocross rider Lucas Bachman died in September of 2011, and last year the track was renamed in his memory. The funeral was held at the raceway, and his ashes were spread on the track. We feel like it's a very, you know, this is where Lucas is for us, and this is where we, when we come here, we you know, think of Lucas and so it's really hard for us to understand why somebody would want to come out and, uh, you know, do this to our track. This family obviously is very concerned about this area. It's, uh, it's sacred ground to them and why somebody would go and do something like this is completely senseless and um, it just creates a lot of a lot of heartache for the family. The track will have to be repaired for Lucas's annual memorial race held this September. In the meantime, the family is just hoping that the vandalism ends and that their son's memory is respected. Megan Willis, New Cap News. Residents have a little under a month left to give their opinions on having a transportation system in the border city. We have had tremendous response from the public. Since the survey started on June 4th, the city has received about 2,600 responses online and there are more that haven't been accounted for yet. We still have paper copies that we have to put in and collect from different locations around, uh, around town, uh, but we, we, we are very happy with the public response up to this point. People have been very good about sharing their thoughts. Lancaster says the issue of public transportation is very important to the city and encourages everyone to participate in the survey. He could not comment on the opinions expressed so far, but says the public's opinion will play a big role in the decision-making process. And if people are not in favor of a public transportation system, then uh, we'll have to uh, come back to the issue later. Now, if people are not in favor about a transportation system, or rather, um, you can f access the survey online, fill out a paper copy from City Hall or the Service Sports Centre team out in the community. The survey wraps up on July 31st and the results will be released in the fall. Changes are coming to one of the schools in the border city. The Lloydminster Public School Division is looking into the future use of Martin Brown School once the new College Park School opens. The school board submitted a motion to the Ministry of Education in the previous school years to decommission the grade levels at Martin Brown. So that means in effect when College Park School opens up, uh, the K-3 students that currently attend there would be you know, reassigned to a different attendance area and uh, they would attend a different school. The school is in an older building and Dr. Dynchuk says it needs a little bit of work. He also says they are not sure what the school will be used for in the future. There are no set plans at this point in time in part because we're looking at the enrollment growth that we're experiencing within the city. Uh, we're looking at uh, perhaps even relocating our outreach program there. Uh, but those are all options that we'll put on the table and review early in the spring. College Park is expected to be completed by May of next year and will officially open in the fall of 2014. With Colonial Days around the corner, festival season has started in the region. Lloyd FM's Heather Cleggis tells us more in this week's What's Happening.
next week, this place is going to be a buzz with activity and rides and a whole bunch of fun games for the whole family as Colonial Days get set to take over the Lloyd X grounds starting on Wednesday. So make sure you get your spot early Wednesday morning for the annual Colonial Days Parade. Always a huge hit, always lots of great floats and lots of great candy for the kids as well. Then make sure you come down, check out Colonial Days. They've got so much going on this year. The Midway, they all have a demolition derby, chuck wagon races, pedal tractor pull for the kids, and don't forget some great shows live on the grandstand, including Dallas Smith next Saturday night. So make sure you make plans to head to Colonial Days next week. It's going to be a busy weekend in Edgerton as they are hosting their annual sports days. You can start off both Saturday and Sunday with the pancake breakfast, then make sure you stick around to check out the antique tractor show pull slow races. They will also have lots of things for the kids to do. They'll have pony chuck wagon races, chariot races. You can stick around and watch some ball games a whole lot more. Plus, if you want to spend the whole weekend, free camping available. So head to Edgerton and check out their sports days this weekend. This weekend, you've got a chance to win a copy of Rob Zombie's latest solo album, Regeneration Vendor. It's really easy for you to win. All you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontests at newcap.ca. And we want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And the Lloydminster Community Youth Centre will be doing a big fundraising concert coming up in September. They have just announced that Carol and Don Johnson will be live at the Vic Juba Theatre Friday, September the 13th. If you want to get tickets for that incredible show and to help out a great cause, you can get them next Friday morning. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegis, and that's what's happening.